This week again, we're going to have a presentation of religious education about uh, the Eucharist, and there's a reason why we come back to the Eucharist so often. It's, it's the source and summit of who we are as Catholics. It's the most important part of our Catholic identity. And to really be a Catholic, it has to be really important in your life. Uh, so to help you as young people come understand the Eucharist, this beautiful video will help you with that. Um, you know, the Eucharist, Holy Communion, the Mass, it's one of the seven sacraments, but it's not just uh, one of them. And as you're watching this video, I'd like you to hear what they say about, about what makes the Eucharist special. Those seven sacraments, what's unique, what do we uniquely say about the Eucharist? It's cool, it's important uh, to catch that point. I'd also like you to listen to and see if you can catch uh, what they say in the Eucharist when the bread and wine become the body and blood of Jesus, what do they become? Uh, it it's, 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 it's talks about something true. Uh, the Eucharist is not really a what, it's really a who, uh, and to see if you catch that point, beautifully stated in this video. And then finally, the word Eucharist, we use it a lot. Sure, it means Holy Communion. Sure, it means the bread that becomes the body and blood of Jesus. Sure, it means the Mass, the celebration where that sacrament is celebrated. But the word itself has a great meaning. And it impacts the reason, I believe, why we should be here every week. Uh, a God who blesses us so much. Uh, that's what we call the celebration. See if you can catch those things as you watch this beautiful video again this week on the Mass. We're in the early morning hours of December 4th, 1912, with an account of a fire, a church, and a remarkable rescue. At 6.06 a.m., a fire broke out in the basement library, the regular meeting room of the Knights of Columbus Smoking Club of St. Philip Neri Roman Catholic Church in the Bronx, New York. A passerby, seeing the flames, raised the alarm by ringing the meal bell of the adjoining clerical refectory. Minutes later, a crowd of neighborhood gawkers gathered on the street below as the New York Fire Department assembled on Grand Boulevard and the concourse opposite to East 202nd Street. Deputy Fire Chief Barrett mobilized his crew in the rear of the building, and they began the work of containing the now raging inferno. At 8.21 a.m., Chief Barrett instructed his men that due to the fire being fully involved and fully developed, no one was allowed to enter the church. The likelihood of surviving inside St. Philip Neri Church was now approaching zero. Thanks be to God, no one was inside. Suddenly, two priests were seen rushing from the adjoining rectory. These men were Father Daniel Burke and Father Joseph Congedo. Struggling through the sea of first responders, the men charged into their beloved chapel disappearing into the smoky interior of the ill-fated facade. No one expected them to return. Miraculously, moments later, the two priests emerged, Father Burke bearing an object wrapped in a handkerchief, and Father Congedo at his side with lit candle in hand. What was it that these two men risked their lives to save? What was this thing? Bread. Please, tell me this wasn't just about bread.
two priests run back in, into a burning building to rescue the Eucharist while everyone else is running out. I mean, that's crazy, right? But maybe not. Maybe it's the most sane thing they could have done. Third century, Roman Empire. Tarsicius, a 12-year-old boy, living during the time of the Roman persecutions. Tarsicius was sent out with the Eucharist to give to Christians condemned to death. Along the way, he was stopped by a group of boys. They discovered he was Christian and became anxious to see what he was holding. Tarsicius refused. The gang became enraged, beating him so he would give up his holy mysteries. He never did. He was beaten to death. 1581, England. During the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, it was considered an act of treason to say the Mass. To make matters worse, there was a bounty on the head of any priest. Heedless of these conditions, Edmund Campion, an Englishman, seeing his countrymen deprived of the Holy Eucharist, traveled on foot and in secret to Rome to join the Jesuits. He was soon caught imprisoned in the Tower of London, tortured, hanged, drawn, and quartered. 1900s, China. In the Chinese countryside, soldiers were in the process of destroying a small Catholic church. The priest was arrested, the tabernacle stolen, and the sacred hosts were strewn across the floor. A small girl, whom no one noticed in the back of the church, witnessed the desecration and saw where these 32 sacred hosts had landed. For each of the next 32 nights, she snuck past the guards back into the church, prayed in front of the Eucharist, and consumed them one by one. On the last night, after the girl had received the final Eucharist, she accidentally woke the guard. He chased her down and beat her to death. 1224, Assisi, Italy. Claire, foundress of the poor Claire religious order, received word that the army of Frederick II, Holy Roman Emperor, was bearing down on her convent, leaving in its wake a trail of horrific pillaging. Claire went out to face the invading army with nothing more than the Eucharist in her hands. She raised the host high into the air praying God to save her convent. The invading army was gripped with fear and fled without harming a single soul. These are just a few of the countless stories throughout the history of the church of people showing great devotion, sacrifice, and love for this simple bit of bread. What is it about this humble food that leads people to do such heroic, amazing things? Maybe it isn't just about bread. So what do Catholics believe? The Eucharist is one of the seven sacraments of the church. These sacraments are special means instituted by Christ by which God reaches down to us and shares his divine life. However, the Eucharist isn't just one sacrament among many. It's the sacrament of sacraments that one toward which all the others are oriented. According to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the Eucharist is the source and summit of Christian life. At the center of the Eucharistic celebration are bread and wine, that by the invocation of the Holy Spirit and by the very words of Christ, repeated by an ordained priest, become Christ's own body, blood, soul, and divinity. Christ fully present. The church has a word for this, transubstantiation. Trans meaning to change, and substance refers to the very essence of a thing, what it is in itself. Even though the outward appearances remain bread and wine, the reality, the substance, has changed into our Lord Jesus Christ. This sacrament has been given many names the Lord's Supper, the breaking of bread, the Holy Sacrifice, Holy Communion, 
It's most commonly called the Mass, and often today by a Greek word, Eucharist, meaning thanksgiving. The assembly of God's people gathers to give thanks, to partake in this holy communion, communion with each other and with the God who loves us. In brief, the Eucharist is the sum and summary of the Catholic faith. God came to us in all his power. It'd be like sitting right in front of a nuclear explosion. There's no way he'd survive it. So instead, he comes to us in all his love and humility. All throughout the history of salvation, throughout the whole Old Testament, you see bread show up in these amazing, miraculous ways. Bread rains down from heaven, the manna during the time of the Exodus. You see bread, this symbol of life, show up in the tabernacle, in the temple throughout the Old Testament. The bread, through much of history and across the globe, has been considered a staple food. I mean, bread's kind of humble. It's not a luxury. It's not lobster, right? One of those basic things that people need to survive. It actually makes sense when you start putting all of these pieces together that God would actually come in the form of bread. All the sacraments are profound mysteries, and yet their outward signs, their appearances, are usually very humble. They are signs, visible realities, that point to the invisible, to a divine grace. The water used in baptism, poured over a person's head, indicates a spiritual reality, a soul being cleansed. In confirmation, we are anointed with oil to make us witnesses. Natural things pointing to supernatural realities. This is what God does. He reaches out to us in ways we can understand. In the Eucharist, we eat humble bread, something we all do, something we all understand. These simple outward signs, bread and wine, signs of physical sustenance, point to a spiritual nourishment we can't do without. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Jesus spoke those words to the apostles at the Last Supper. He told them to do what he had just done. He had just caused bread and wine to become his body and blood. He commanded them to do this, to do what he had just done, and through the apostles, so the bishops and the priests, down through the centuries, 2,000 years. When you go to Mass, wherever it is, whenever you're going, you have just received God, Jesus Christ. You're not just reading about him in a book. He is now one with you. It's like you're the tabernacle. And then, as Mass ends, he says, go in peace. There's a whole world out there that needs to see you and to hear you. Because in seeing you and in hearing you and watching how you live and love, they see Christ himself. When we're discovering what the Eucharist is, the question we should be asking isn't what is the Eucharist, it's who is the Eucharist. The Eucharist is not a thing, it is a person. It is Jesus. And that's why we heard the story about those two priests who would run inside a burning building, not to rescue bits of bread and wine, no one would do that, but to save something that's real and precious, someone 
that's real and precious. That's why those great stories of the men and women throughout history who devoted themselves to lifting up, to preserving the sacred host. That's why our churches have times and places set aside for adoration. That's why in every Catholic church across the world, there are tabernacles with candles burning, showing us that someone is waiting for us. Think about this, the God, the God and the Lord of the universe, the Creator, as powerful as He is, as infinite as He is, as eternal as He is, as holy as He is, still humbles Himself, making Himself truly present. For our sake, He comes to us in the forms of something so simple, so beautiful, bread and wine, something we can eat and can give us strength for our journey, but also something we can, we can store, we can keep with us. So we, we have the Lord that is giving us not only what we need today, but His presence, His, His accompaniment to be with us at every moment of our lives in our Blessed Sacrament, in the tabernacle. So many people today are searching for greater meaning, a greater purpose to their lives. They're, they're, they're searching for happiness. They're, they're, they're longing for something more. They're ultimately searching for God. But the good news is, our God is searching for us. He's already seeking us out. And, and He comes to us longing for an intimate relationship with us. He wants to walk beside us in life and help us in life. And He loves us so much, He comes to us in the Eucharist. Support. He's there for you. He wants to draw near to you and to help you. All you have to do is turn to Him. God wants to be with us. He wants to be with us because he's all good. We're not. <laughs> he wants us to be good like him, to perfect us. It's communion with a direction. We want to commune with Jesus in the Eucharist so we could be more like him. I consume the Eucharist because I want the Eucharist to consume me. It's not meant to meet you where you are and keep you there. Jesus in the Eucharist calls you higher. The Eucharist opens up an entirely new world. This is why every Mass is centered around the great, mysterious truth, because this is the most precious thing we have this side of eternity. This is why it's called the source and summit of our faith. There's so much to partake in something so small.